The Dare to Dream podcast has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. Dare to Dream is ranked in the top 100 best podcasts in USA in self-improvement on Apple Podcasts and ranks in the top 50 podcasts globally. Debbie Dashinger is a certified coach whose expertise is visibility in media. She coaches people to write a page-turner book, takes their book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and Debbie pulls back the curtain so her clients have the system to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. Connect with Debbie Dashinger at debbiedashinger.com. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com. The Dare to Dream podcast is sponsored by Dr. Dane Here and Access Consciousness. Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to this episode of Dare to Dream. Today I am featuring Vitika Kulhoff from the Netherlands. Vitika is somebody who's going to be bringing to you her inherent wisdom, both as a coach and as uh, somebody who's been very much in conscious contact with other races, other beings from other planets since she was three years old. So we'll have a long chat with her, and we're also going to be speaking with Arjun of the Yael, whom she will channel. I must say that the wisdom definitely comes from both, very unique to both, and it's a sumptuous show indeed. We're going to be finding out things like yeah, the Yael and their ancient language also known as the Shalanaya, why? And what does Shalanaya mean? Are they actually the first ET civilization who will openly meet us here on Earth in person? And if so, when? What about the first hybridization colonization or civilization? Are they like us? Are there hybrid races? And what does that mean human DNA mixed with ET DNA? Are we an amalgam? How many of us are? And is there racism out in space that may really surprise you? And finally, what does the year 2020 mean? Hint, it has to do with vision. So we're going to be going into time frame, the manifestation, and way more. This is one of those shows I think you're going to want to hang this on the door and just lock yourself inside and enjoy every moment of what you're going to hear. Debbie Dasher, Dare to Dream. Do not disturb while this is playing. You may want to even listen at least one more time. Featuring Vita Kukulhoff and Arjun. Enjoy. Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. This is an auspicious show for me indeed, following my heart. I've got Vitika Kulhoff here. She's a new paradigm life coach and a conscious designer. She offers ET channeling in the Netherlands as well as globally. It is Vitika's passion to share the love and high frequency messages from our multidimensional brothers and sisters such as Arjun of the Yael and other high-frequency EDs, meaning extra-dimensionals. They have come on our own invitation to assist humanity with their wisdom and rebalancing of our physical system. Vitika facilitates new doorways to further explore and experience our own multidimensional nature and personal connection to the stars. She is known as an international channel for Arjun of the Yael, as an artist, painter, and illustrator, lifestyle coach, health food recipe for her yoga, and more. Her website to check out is designforawareness.com. That's design, the letter for, awareness.com. And without any further ado, I welcome Vitika from the Netherlands to the Dare to Dream show. It is so great to have you here. Thank you, Debbie, for opening up this space and time and for doing your blessed work also. I'm really honored. I literally cleared the calendar and moved people around because I saw you being interviewed on television. I was deeply moved. I feel truth when I hear truth. And I also felt like this is so important and timely. There's a lot of events going on on the planet right now and for humanity and for Gaia. 
And I would imagine if that's true for us, that's true for the universe. So can we start there. How is that for you? Does this also feel like this is timely? This is the time for this information to come out into the world in a big way. Yeah, yeah, I feel that too. It's um, like um, we're really being ushered now to speak our truth. Like you just said, when you hear it, you know it. Um, and this is about humanity um, learning to use our discernment to speak our personal truth and to, um, you know, spread our wings, really, because I feel we all have wings, in a sense, we're all angels, you know, as a symbol, I'm using wings as a symbol. Oh, wow, I love that. That's beautiful. <laughs> love your necklace. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we've been ki keeping these win uh, wings so folded up behind us that many of us aren't even aware of the fact that we have them. So um, yeah, right now I feel that probably a lot of, um, you know, just, you know, this is a term that's used a lot, a lot of quote unquote light workers right now probably feel it too, that, you know, yeah, speak up, shine brightly and um, yeah unite also stand together co-create like you're doing right now reaching out to other people and and creating a platform on which we can share which is so important right now so mm -hmm. yeah I feel how did channeling come about for you i understand that you started at a really really young age so i don't know if that was terrifying or just a, a normal part of life but can you take us a bit on the journey of how the inception of channeling came to you and through you. Yeah, I can. Thank you for asking. So since two and a half, three years old, I've been perceiving um, multidimensional entities. I wouldn't call that channeling just yet. I think channeling for me as a verb means being consciously aware of the fact that you're, you know, allowing something to flow through and translating it deliberately, you know, um, aiming for the best possible presentation of what you sense is being offered to you. So, and then, you know, allowing it to flow through. So that's what channeling is in my personal dictionary. But yeah, since I was a child, I've had these encounters. I never knew though that it was gonna lead me to channeling path. So that was a surprise for me as well uh, when that actually happened eventually. So as a child, I had what you could call visitations. These were, amongst others, uh, the ETs that humans call greys. Um, later on, that shifted into hybrids, much more gentle energy. Um, yeah, there was a lot of fear for me. Up until the age of 23, I was kind of battling the out-of-body experiences because I thought I was crazy. Um, so I reached out for help. Um, at the age of 23, I was doing art academy really really loving that it was one of the most joyful and playful ways for me to translate the information that i was constantly being given and that i at the at that time didn't believe i could truly talk about so i reached out for help and i went to a therapist who had a background as a hypnotherapist really amazing man and he was the first adult in my life who told me that whatever was um, being perceived by me in nighttime um, was an aspect of me. Mind you, there were no, um, you know, like channeled or spiritual information available for me in my life at that time. I was raised without this stuff, <laughs> which is the reason why I didn't dare speaking about it to begin with. My mother was Protestant, my father was Catholic. Oh. I lived with both of them, they lived separately. Mm. Uh, so I, I lived between two households. Um, so it was Christianity, you know, from beginning to end. And <clears throat> I had a lot of questions about that too, about religion, because it didn't always line up with the information I was getting, obviously. So out of insecurity, I just didn't speak about it. Um, and then age 23, I left the house around 17, by the way, quite early. Uh, about age 23, I sought help. This beautiful man told me, you know, um, everything that you perceive in the nighttime is actually an aspect of you. Like I said, that changed everything 180 degrees for me. 
It helped me overcome my fear. And for the first time in my life, I realized I didn't have to respond with fear. Mm. And I could potentially even interact with these entities on my own, you know, initiative. So I started doing that. That's what changed everything around. Um, and then the entire energy of the OBEs, you know, balanced out. And I could use the information in a much more uh, tangible way, much more effective. And after doing that for a few months, I had my first UFO sighting together with a friend who was a witness, a relatively close encounter of a huge, entirely dead silent triangular ship that appeared in the middle of nowhere in the sky and disappeared as well. It like hovered over us and then disappeared. You know, not a sound, not a trace, literally moving from one dimension to the next. So to make it super obvious that it wasn't of our species, that it wasn't something military or whatever. Of course, I understand there are people who think, you know, that maybe <laughs> the army has technology like this, but this was in, let me see, 2003, 2004, around and about. I don't think it was that, you know, <laughs> I really didn't feel like human technology. But anyway, we had that sighting, me and a friend. Um, then my dreams really started going crazy with a lot of ETs. And it left me with a, a very strong urge to meditate, funnily enough. I didn't get that completely. Um, but I honored it, and it was very strong and powerful. And right after art school was finished, I started traveling. I went to uh, Asia, Thailand, and visiting monasteries, doing meditations learning how to do that, beginning, you know, phases of that. And then for another about 10 years, I just, you know, meditated, yoga, adjusted my lifestyle, my eating patterns. Uh, and from being an artist, illustrator, I kind of warped into life coaching um, and lifestyle um, advisor. Uh, for organic lifestyle all these things um, how do you sh shift from a regular diet to you know vegan if that's your desire how can you do that in a gentle way how do you don't get you know lack of minerals and vitamins stuff like that so i started all of that and that kind of became my new profession uh, generally or how do you say gently transforming into that direction uh, and all the time along i was still doing meditation and i definitely knew by then that I was consciously being guided by ET guides. Mm. But I used it for myself and I really never considered sharing that with another person. And I strongly doubted that I could share this with other people. So eventually they kind of surprised me by um, in one of the meditations that I was in, they were just toying around with me, kind of like playing um, catch. How do you say that? Uh, kind of like, you know, I felt these like nudges in my energy field and they were really kind of like teasing, like, hey, hey, <laughs> what you doing? And I was like, whoa, you guys, what's going on? And, and then eventually they um, revealed to me that they were of the Yai Yell. So that was the first announcement. And I had to like really integrate that first because when, once something is being labeled, the rational mind immediately jumps on top of it and goes like, oh, what does this mean? You know, uh, am I supposed to do anything with that? Why are they identifying themselves now all of a sudden? I mean, I knew it was hybrid. I just, you know, it was, you know, background <laughs> information for me. And now it just really came into the for forefront. And um, then they let me know a month after that introduction of, you know, their species, um, they let me know if you're ready, we can work with you, um, for other people. And that took me another three days to, you know, to give that a place in my system. And then I thought, you know, I was absolutely terrified. I'll tell you, but I thought, you know, okay, if this is true, I'm, I'm, I will never know if this is true mm. unless I test it. So from the clients that I had as a life coach, I started inviting some of the more open-minded ones <laughs> to, to be 
a guinea pig in a sense in uh, channeling sessions with Arjun. By that time, I didn't have his name yet. We didn't use his name yet. So I just said the Yael. So yeah, and with these sessions, I think I did a 30 or so of these. Um, donation based at first, slowly but surely I started to ask some money for it and then eventually uh, the waiting list of that or for that was so long that I was like, oh man, <laughs> this, is, this is a thing. Like finally my conscious mind was also, you know, um, um, it found reassurance, this is a thing. And that's when I decided, okay, I'm gonna come out of the closet with this and share it with my friend's family environment. I'm gonna put it on my website and see what comes of it. And up until today, I call it an out of hand experiment, <laughs> but I'm still in it. Uh, but every day, again, I really very consciously screen myself. Is this still my highest excitement? Do I wanna do this? It's like, mm. you really consciously choose this in my, personal um, experience that's the best way to work with this uh, but it's an adventure and for me too I have no idea where this is gonna quote-unquote lead to but it has changed my life phenomenally um, beyond you know things I could have ever imagined if somebody would have told me this is what you're gonna do and this is what you're gonna know to be true from you know your own empiric experiences uh, probably would not have believed them if that was like five years before I actually started the channeling. But yes, I'm still doing this. So that's, and that's the only story. is it only Arjun of the Yael that you channel, or are there other extra dimensionals who also come through you as a channel? Sometimes some others hop on in. How do you say? <laughs> in the they kind of like visit the chat for people. Like if they have a specific guide or wants to say something to them directly. But in most occasions, Arjun translates it for me still, or he's standing mm -hmm. in the sideline. And the reason for that is almost technical, I would say, because I understand that he is a split off of the same oversoul. He's a future self of me, quote unquote, even though, of course, he's his own person and I am my own person. But since we have um, a mutual origin on the long letter to, source you could say we're we're on a higher energy frequency like you share a soul it's an over soul and that's why it's easier technically for him to connect with me and for me to connect with him and for him to be the translator even if other entities have something to throw into the mix but it has happened it has wow. happened i'm having this interesting thought right now you know Okay, I did not have a great childhood. I wouldn't want to repeat it. Let's just put it that way. And I understand it was for great purpose uh, for me to come through the other side with the choices I made and the healings I've done. I've always had this feeling that there was a future me that was, go I think originally I would say there was an angel who was always with me as a child because that, that's the only way I could have gotten through my childhood intact and as functional as I am. Mm. And then as um, my spiritual healing work has gone on over the last 13 years, one of the things I've thought about is, oh, it maybe wasn't an angel. It was me thinking this linear timeline in meditation and so forth, but just an energy always being present with little Debbie. And now I'm listening to you and thinking, wow, that's so much bigger than what I had thought, because what if the same is true for me? That there was actually an aspect and a concurrent lifestyle or planet of me that has been hovering and making sure she's gonna get through so she can be here to do what she came here to do and be. And then I'm having a little bit of a cool mind explosion with that oh, idea. I love that. Arjun actually says this is the case for everybody in one way or another. So since everything actually exists here and now, we all have future selves, obviously. Everything exists here and now. So if you think about that, whatever you're going to do tomorrow, she already exists. <laughs> I know it sounds like a mind boggle, but you know. So And also, the reason that you can remember your childhood and then in what a sense what you're doing when you remember something, this is how they explained it to me. 
When you remember something, you overlap your current energy frequency focus point with the focus point of that child. You are not that child anymore, but you can tune in with her. And then you feel like you think the child felt, mm. but you're creating it now in who you are now, right? So that's a memory. Mm -hmm. But when you think of the future and you ponder to make a certain decision, you don't know what yet, maybe you will get a new job or not get the new job, you're tuning in with it. Mm -hmm. Arjuna has explained to me when you tune in with something, there is a future version that has in fact already taken that decision. And mm -hmm. they may flag back to you, don't do this, this is a horrible idea. Or, yes, do this. And when they say, yes, do this, you feel an, um, excitement flowing through you. And when they say don't do it, you may feel anxiety for that reason or, or another one. You may have a negative belief about the job that doesn't serve you and then you have to clean up the negative belief. But in either case, when you tune in with something that is quote unquote in the future, you're tuning in with future versions of yourself. Mm. That is it's a very whole new explanation of, you know, I've always said the one thing I've done right my whole life is follow energy. If I mm -hmm. left to my own devices, who knows the life I would have created but if I just follow what is presented to me and I can feel, suss out, oh, this is exciting. I don't know why I want to do this. I know I want to do this. When I follow that, everything works out beautifully. So I love this explanation. It could be the future self coming back to inform me, you know, yep, that's a delicious path or that wouldn't work out so well. I can promise you I've been living it. That's what? so cool. This is so cool. You what? know, so you have this, um, site that you've just developed. I want people to know about it because I know a ton of people have already been on starseedhub.com. Tell us a little bit about starseedhub.com. Oh, thank you for bringing this up. This is the biggest gift. Thank you so much. Yeah, so when I started doing, doing the channeling work for other people, I, I ran into a lot of people, obviously, who've had ET contact experiences themselves in one way or another who felt really challenged by that and having this information and walking around with it and feeling just so super lonely because in our society it is still quite a bit of a taboo subject to talk about i understand that i don't judge it i don't fight it but i'm very much for like my heart so goes out to these people because i've been there i've been afraid to talk about the subject for a big chunk of my own life and it just the transformation that came with starting to open up was huge. Yeah, I, I had to switch, you know, like friend circles, <laughs> you know, at some point. Uh, I've had to leave people behind, quote unquote, who couldn't, you know, meet me on this level of information, which is fine. I mean, it was always like in love and with uh, respect that our ways parted in that sense. So I, and I can see how a lot of people are afraid of that, you know, being shunned and um, ostracized. Mm -hmm. But um, this website is particularly for people who feel alone in their um, awareness of multidimensional connections that they experience has, that have helped them spiritually on their way. So whether I would say, of course, the emphasis here is on extraterrestrial, but multidimensional, I think you can all talk to each other. You know, I really do. So uh, from the beginning, I started doing this channeling work, which is about six years ago. I've had this dream in my heart. I was like, oh, my God, I wish there was a platform that was 100 percent neutral, that doesn't push any type of one path or one teaching, that just makes it a neutral playground for star seeds people who've had these interstellar or multidimensional contact experiences to find each other so that they can meet up, have a cup of coffee and share. I mean, it is such a joy for our hearts to be able to share with somebody who knows at least a little bit what you've been going through. It's such a, you know, it's a homecoming. It's a celebration. And like I said in the beginning, I think this time is really about connecting, reconnecting and reaching out and seeing and experiencing in real life that you're not alone. So you can make a little profile, put yourself on the map. Um, little heads up to people who are curious about this. It's free. Um, if you make a profile, you have to fill it out because otherwise you won't show up on the map. So 
Mm. Fill out the profile. <laughs> so, tell a little bit something about yourself. Give an indication of where you're at. You don't have to like put your home address, but if you have the guts, uh, more power to you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so step up and disclose yourself. I really believe mm. that sure in the greater sense of the word isn't going to happen unless we are willing to disclose ourselves first. So yeah, this is something now that is out there. You can go on it and check it out and see how many people in your own surroundings may be, um, you know, up for a cup of coffee or chats or, you know, whatever. <laughs> Love it. So starseedhub.com, if you want to go there and fill it out, and um, it's, it's very cool, interactive, and you'll see your little star pop up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Yael are in their ancient language, also known as the Shalanaya. Shalanaya, beautiful, which means those who come first. Mm -hmm. My question is, is it your understanding that the Yael will be the very first ET civilization to openly meet with us here on earth in person? There's a high probability, as I understand it, it's a really high probability, but it's not 100%. So they may be the first hybrid race to open up contact with us in this way. They're one of the five hybrid races that were created between the grays, the future humans that turned into the grays, uh, and us, now, nowadays humans, <laughs> where we are right now, this timeline. So five hybrid races were created. Are you familiar with this story? I, I am actually, but... Do you mind if I ask you, because you mentioned that Greys originally came to visit you. Yeah. Uh, and I'm curious, are you a hybrid of Greys? And if so, because I understand there's three types of Greys. There's the short Greys, which are rather robotic and they just carry out the job. There's the uh, somewhat taller, maybe more human size uh, Greys, around five, six feet, who tend to be more connected to emotion, uh, better to connect with us. And then there are the very tall greys, seven feet and beyond, who are the more managerial, if you will, greys that can have all these properties and more. So is that true? And if so, are you a hybrid? And if it's a gray, which, <laughs> what size are we talking about or what type? And with what else are you a hybrid? Okay, okay, <laughs> let me see how am I gonna answer this. <clears throat> so in my understanding, we are all hybridized. So first of all, the human species would not have existed were it not for hybridization. This is the so-called missing link that scientists are talking about. They can't figure out how we went from this more like ape-like being into suddenly walking all erect and being homo sapiens. That missing link was the Anunnaki or the Anu. So that's an extraterrestrial race, although it's not the grays. So that's how Homo sapiens was created. So that's a hybridization. There have been a little bit more hybridizations along the way, as I understand from our June. You know, a little pinch here and there. Um, and then there's one future timeline. So we're going to go into this future timeline thing again of a version of Earth where the humans turned into the grays. So it's a future timeline and it went kind of rogue and they went so strongly into um, science, mechanics. Um, well, there's nothing wrong with these things in inher inherently. It's just the way they used it. They really cut themselves off of their emotions. And that version of gray eventually, as I understand it, within all that is within the universe, if you walk a path that is strongly out of balance, nature will kind of course correct. So within all that is, the greys eventually discovered they couldn't reproduce anymore, not even by cloning. It was entirely impossible. Their DNA was basically at its end. So they realized, okay, the only way for us to continue to survive with our species is to tunnel back into time and to, well, use DNA from humans that still have viable DNA. Now, so that's something they couldn't do alone. So they were assisted by other extraterrestrial races, <clears throat> such as the mantids, 
you may have heard of these before. Mm -hmm. They played a major role in the hybridization project. So now when channelers are speaking about the hybridization project, they're usually referring to this project. Now, there was a sole agreement with every single person who was a part of this project. We've seen signs of it in our human history starting around the 1920s, 1930s. This is where you start to hear the first reports of people who have seen actual greys, both the little ones that you're describing and the taller ones. Um, but it didn't fully surface, I think, until the 60s, the 70s. Then there's this whole wave, particularly in America, where a lot of people start to open up about the concept, uh, which is beautiful, I think, and people can do their own research to look into that. Obviously, the density of these days was a lot thicker. I don't know how else to express that. Um, and the understanding of the people was more basic, more fundamental, and very often they felt uh, invaded. So that's where the term abduction came from. Because it, it isn't a very friendly term, and I understand there's a lot of fear around it. Mm -hmm. And I honor uh, the people who have gone through what they've experienced, that they've went through because they were in a sense the pavers of the road on which it is now so much more easy to connect with multidimensional beings the greys themselves are no longer uh, part of the hybridization project the way it looks like right now because it's done basically the five steps that were needed to quote unquote hybridize themselves back to as human as they could possibly get uh, that's finished the Yael are the fifth and the final race. So the children within the Yael species are called the Shalanaya, are specifically called the Shalanaya, and some of those that will come first. So am I hybridized? As I understand, um, these being a part of this project so i know i was a part of the hybridization project i know i donated my dna in mm. this time um runs often in family lineages so arjun has explained to me he gave me a little family tree and with that image bam showed me it's gone back like six generations or something where your ancestors have already met us or had encounters whether they remembered it or not um where they were fine-tuned and prepared for you to be at the level where you are right now and having this open communication in this way which was still optional and still is i mean it was an open invitation for me to work with them and it remains an open invitation so every day i choose to do it again and i love it <laughs> but a lot of people were part of this uh, a wonderful speaker on this, what's her name again? Oh my God, uh, from Australia. You know, this um, little bit older woman, uh, Mary Rodwell. <clears throat> she is a wonderful international speaker on the subject of hybridization and new age children. Mm. And she has collected data from all over the world, hundreds of thousands of reports people who've had or believed to have had these type of connections, visitations, or quote unquote abductions. Um, but most of these experiences were actually very positive. Mm -hmm. And she is going through that data with a team of specialists and scientists um, to create reports so that people can look into this. And I also really recommend her, um, her talks on YouTube. She has some amazing lectures there for free for everybody to see if they want to. So it's not just me and Arjun actually said um, uh, roughly around a third of our planet, a third of our human race has been involved in the hybridization project in one way or another. So it doesn't have to be physical DNA that you were, you know, um, donating to them, to the grades or to another hybrid species in between. Uh, it may have been an energetic donation. You can actually... Mm donate energy a part of your character uh, traits or you may have been a teacher there's people who weren't physically engaged in um you know creating the new species the new races 
but that would go in their out of body or dream state and uh, help the hybrid children understand what life is like on earth. Some people do that in their dream times and they, they wonder why am I always dreaming that I'm in front of a classroom and this might be it. So there is a lot of layers wherein this is unfolding. So I might be a little bit of a little bit hybridized, <laughs> but I don't know to what degree I wouldn't be able to say, but I know it's been, you know, the contact has been in my family line. Yeah. Very interesting. A lot of times I hear people such as yourself who talk about this or who channel extra dimensionals and they will say, oh, you know, typically you will know you mentioned one third of the planet. Typically you'll know that's you because you grew up feeling really different, definitely different. Well, okay, I can identify with that. I felt incredibly different growing up. I still do to some degree, although I have my tribe, but I feel like that's not conclusive. So my question is, what are the signs? What are the ways that people can actually identify, oh, I think this actually makes a lot of sense and that's me because I fill in the blank. Hmm. Wow. I don't really know how to answer that. Like I could say some things, but you know, the first connection, I think this is the more important part. The first connection that we all have is with our higher self and the information that the ETs are sharing with us through channeling is filtered through that higher self. So we have a human over soul. You could say we're all connected in a human soul mm. that holds the information that we're always so in awe with when we hear some ET channeler share that stuff with us. Um, but what we're feeling is the reconnection to our own grander selves. Mm. And as I understand it, we're just super ready to reach beyond the concept of being just you know, this lonely planet in the universe with the only one with life, like nobody else out there. We're just very ready to remember that we're more than just this. But so this is what I'm heading for. When you realize that, you may have, you know, um, an epiphany through during a meditation or in a workshop that you did or because you fall in love with somebody. It, it can be triggered by a myriad of things. Mm. But the feeling that you will have is similar to what I feel every time I connect with Arjun. So it's hard for me to separate the two and to say that oh, these are things that particularly make you potentially having been a part of the hybridization project. And these are things that particularly make you reawakening to your higher self's information. Because information wise, it's one, if you would ask me. Now, experience-wise, it kind of depends on your age, I guess, where you're in the program or where you've been in the program. Um, I had an unexplainable fear for water as a child. Mm -hmm. I, I have some memories of um, the visitations where I was kind of put in a liquid, but you can breathe in it. But my rational mind battled it, and I thought I was drowning, but I wasn't. <laughs> So the feeling that you're not being heard, having had, um, because your rational mind can't keep up with the multidimensional experiences, that is, waking up frozen, you know what I mean? Um, yes. In this frozen body state and not being able to move or speak. Oh or my gosh. This is a very typical thing for people who have had visitations in one way or another. Uh, because you're now I understand what's going on. You kind of freeze your whole body. You're literally unable to move. It's it's called sleep paralysis, I believe. Um, you do that because if you would allow the body to respond to what's going on in that moment, you would freak out. You, you, you could hurt yourself. You would hit around you, maybe hit into the wall, which is still bad enough if you hit your hand or something. So you're basically keeping yourself safe. Now, the one that is doing that it's not the ETs that freeze you over. It's your higher self that has full understanding of what's going on in that moment and keeps you safe because it understands you're not ready yet to you know, move around in that moment. But as you relax into the idea of multidimensional 
uh, interaction. Yeah. I had a lot of these sleep paralysis as a child, as a teenager, the beginning of my 20s. Eventually, it relaxed. Now, I rarely still have that with encounters. And when I do, I realize, ooh, this is a whole new level. This is a new game. Um, this is an energy frequency that I'm newly being introduced to. So I'm using the safety belt again. And I'm not afraid of it. So it's something that eventually you will learn how to navigate. And it relaxes. Knowing things before they happen, I would say is a typical thing. But you could also call that generally psychic. So there you go. Again, it's a bit blurry between starseed and, you know, waking up in general. Um, having a very strong sensation that a presence is with you. That's a pretty strong one, I would say. No, like you said in the beginning with this angel that you felt there was a presence with you throughout your childhood. I've had some of these mo moments where I know Arjun was checking in with me already. Mm. Very, very profound encounter was when I was 14. I was walking on the street and I was in a super low mood. <laughs> and he lifted me out, he lifted me out of it. And that was extraordinary because the way my mind was working in that moment, I was really like, hmm, I don't even know if it's, you know, if I should be on this planet. I was like really low. And, you know, puberty, everything, stuff going on. And he just downloaded into my mind throughout taking two steps. I know exactly where I was crossing the road. I was crossing a road. And he just downloaded into my system this full-on understanding. Nature doesn't make mistakes. All that is wouldn't be complete without you. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. Um, your whole, this is a sacred moment, as is any moment. It's up to you. You determine what meaning is in life by the meaning you subscribe to it. You're free in this. It was super self-empowering. And I just got that in a split second. And it changed my life. It was really amazing. And that's one of the first encounters that I consciously had with him, although I didn't know it was him. And I just felt, what just happened? Because I went from seriously blue to really optimistic. <laughs> mm -hmm. so that was unexplainable for the 14 year old me. But experiences like that, loss of time is a typical one. Um, what else? Of course, having had encounters, if you, I, I saw them walk through the wall. I mean, <laughs> that's a pretty strong indication that you had contact. So stuff like that. Or also maybe feeling your body has alterations to it when you wake up. You know, you may have been in a medical exam. They did have a lot of those. Um, and you could go to a hypno hypnotherapist to check in with certain remnants of little memories that somebody still has and dive deeper into them. But usually I always first, um, how do you say, um, recommend to people to just gently open up that conversation yourself. The reason that if, if you haven't had too many of these memories so far, but you suspect you might have been a part of this big cosmic play, mm. um, first maybe discover or investigate for yourself why you might have suppressed these memories. Is there a fear-based belief in the way? Um, because if there's a fear-based belief, it's less likely that you will allow these memories to resurface. So all of this journey really comes down to getting to know yourself. That's the point, right? I mean, that's why we're here, to get to know ourselves, to rediscover who we really are, how much bigger we are than quote unquote, just this, but just this is already amazing, of course. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and then see if you can transform the fear-based beliefs into better feeling ones so that you open the gates for more memories and information to come freely to you. And remember that whatever, quote unquote, happened, um, it was by agreement. Your rational mind may not have understood what was going on. That's okay. That's completely natural. You may be sad and angry about that. That's also okay and completely natural. It's good to embrace everything that comes up. And it may also just be very loving and light and beautiful. It may also trigger a sensation of homesickness and feeling really alienated. And what am I doing here? And that is so beautiful. And how am I ever going to move on from here? Now I know this. 
is possible. All of that is part of the journey and bringing it back to your center, returning to yourself, seeing how sacred, beautiful and amazing you are, and remembering that that beautiful energy is a part of you and that you can flow it through you into the world. And you're not here by punishment. <laughs> Some people think that they came to earth against their will. Arjuna has very explicitly explained to me that that is not even possible. That's not possible. Nobody, you may feel that way because you started to believe along the way that you very sharply don't prefer some of the things that are going on on this planet today. And I get that, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to argue that. But if you don't judge it, you just observe what's preferred and what's not preferred and you don't judge it then why would you conclude uh, or connect to that observation um, that you're out of place? Because that's a very, um, how do you say, limiting belief system for humans to have, as I understand it right now. It, it dims your light. If you say, I'm here against my will, I shouldn't have been here, this is all a mistake, incarnationally, this is a glitch in the system, no, it's not. How are you ever going to stand in your power if you believe that to be true? You see? So you have to anchor and love the fact that you are having a human experience. Human, you as in light, a glow, a human experience. That's amazing. There's light in every single one of us. So we're being invited to remember that and to see that. And this is probably the biggest passion of our June to and me together, I could say probably, to, to join forces, so to speak, and um, help spread that message on our earth today for whoever is open to listen to this, um, <clears throat> this particular source of information. Mm. That was a great description. And I hope people got a lot out of that. I, I have no recollection at all of being abducted or seeing anything, anything like that. But I will say what was rather arresting for me was when you described the not being able to get back in your body. When I was between the ages of 18 to 26 or 27, it happened repeatedly. The first time I remember I was 18, I had just moved from New York to California, I was going to USC. It was like my first week here. I couldn't wait to get to the beach and see it. I took a bus to the beach and I was laying on Santa Monica Beach and apparently I fell asleep and I woke up and I remember seeing my body in a bathing suit on the blanket and I could not stir my body. I could not make it move. I couldn't, I didn't even know if it was breathing. I couldn't get back in. I remember the terror and I remember feeling like a really, really, really long time, you know, until at some point uh, with a lot of effort and will, oh, I was able to pop back in. But it happened over and over where I would have what I would call, but what do I know? Um, especially then, like today would be so different. I would have a different, um, I would be very open, frankly, and very trusting and working with the energies back then. Like I didn't understand at all what was happening. And I would have these amazing experiences outside of my body. Not pleasant, frankly. Sometimes I was in a repeated, uh, beautiful, it should have been a beautiful home, but there were terrible things going on in many different rooms. And, um, I just couldn't come back. And I had it with, I remember a lion on a driveway meeting me and I was really frightened of it and things like this. And I got to a point where I literally made a conscious choice and said, no more. I am mm -hmm. never having this happen again. I'm mindfully choosing to not leave my body, to not have that happen. And so it is, right? <laughs> Very powerful. I think I did that too at some point because I started having experiences a little bit later on in my early, early 30s about presences. You know, I could sense things and sometimes they were dark and I was just like, yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, a lot of protection devices. So these pieces that you named were like, wow, I've never heard that described before. And I don't really ever talk about it. You know, it's mm -hmm. like a old memory I don't even think about. 
but I remember. Yep. <laughs> Sounds like you had out of body experiences. Sounds like that to me. Like, and I was afraid of it too in the beginning, you know, to be, to seem disconnected from your body. It's not actually possible to not be able to go back though, mm. but you may believe that you're not able to go back. And then that belief will keep you focused outside of your body. It's hilarious because whatever you believe in the quote unquote non-physical immediately manifests as real. So you're not even aware of the fact that you're like, oh my God, I can't get back to my body. And you're completely manifesting in that moment, the idea that you can't get back to your body. <laughs> but then eventually, like you said, you, you have enough willpower to, to, you know, wham, you're back in it, right? Um, so you can actually flip a button. So there's a, a threshold between telling yourself something that's not preferred and realizing that that's not preferred and then actually debunking it. Mm. And that will allow you to go back. It's self-empowering. It's very self-empowering. A lot of our dreams, as I understand it, and I've had many nightmares when I was younger. Yes. Because I battled everything. And now I see, oh, well, have you ever? I created these nightmares because I was so full of resistance. Mm. And the environment reflect back to me my resistance and the resistance was just a logical result of the many many negative beliefs that we are all spoon-fed to begin with when we were growing up so you know your parents tell you that's not supposed to happen that's a weird thing oh nobody has that so the moment you realize you have that you get super concerned you know that's um very um manipulative in a sense of, of you know your experiences, but just imagine, this is what I love to do. Imagine a future version of earth where toddlers are being raised to realize that they don't just exist on the physical level, but that we are multidimensional beings. Mm. And at night you go and you play, you play in other worlds, you play with other beings, you may meet a friend, you may meet people that seem to be no longer alive, but since we are infinite beings, everybody lives on and you can still meet them there. You can meet them in your heart with intention, but also in your dreams. Imagine being raised with that. And then the amount of confidence and joy and exploration and data and intelligence and investigation, you know, like scientists, if they were raised to understand that you can find answers in the non-physical, of the lemmas that we have in the physical you know the world would be such a different place i love daydreaming about this this is basically how the yayel raise their children they realize this from the beginning on so they're much more evolved in that way than we are powerful and uh, i want to ask this last question before we invite Arjun to the show mm -hmm. to be with us. There are people, there are plenty of people out there who are free of fear, who are yeah. saying, bring it. Like I want, I know, I believe, I know. And I want to have this experience. I'm starting to get there a bit myself where it's like, okay, I, I, I know I feel I'll be safe. I feel like this will be a beautiful progression. I feel like if you exist, it is time to connect. But what does that take? Can somebody, does it have to have been an inception of a soul level contract and agreement? Or can we in real time invite it in? And if so, how? How do you mean in real time? You mean just like now? I mean, good question. Uh, not necessarily this moment now, but meaning in general, if people right now in their lives are saying, I would like this to happen. I would like a sighting. I would like to connect with a, an ET, you know, preferably safe ET, you know, from yeah. another planet, not, not maybe not a particular reptile, but, you know, I would like to have some experiences. I'm ready. Bring it. How can they send out the beacon or broadcast well, that they'd like to do this. It's kind of funny because as you're as you're um, putting this example together, um, you could do it that way, like right now. You could right now set out the intention. I think it's probably more powerful if you take a little time for it, like make a little bit of a space for it, uh, where you maybe meditate or you listen to good music or when you're super happy 
or while you're walking through the forest and you're enjoying nature and to set it out then you know like a desire from the energy frequency that you're on in the moment when you're putting out the intention and this is why i would actually not recommend going <laughs> with this rational mind into details like oh but it has to be a friendly et so no reptilians and by the way that's kind of a little bit like racist <laughs> no offense because <laughs> there's a lot of super kind reptilians out there so but in in the old fashioned um beginning stages of our understanding of extraterrestrials um racist oh my god <laughs> no it's okay i'm sorry like i said <laughs> sorry, reptilians. i'm sorry no, it's okay, but I understand a lot of people think that way, but it's it, they have a bad rep, but it's unfair, you know? It is unfair, but it's our, it's so symbolical. All of this, this whole world of multidimensional extraterrestrial beings is a mirror of our souls. It's really important to realize that. So if you say, I like everything about myself, except my own fears and angers, what are you gonna pull in, right? So. If you're putting out an invitation, just say, I trust that whatever will come through will be good for me in the moment when it comes through. I will be able to use it. Just like I love bringing it down to earth. I love keeping this simple. Interacting with extraterrestrials in that sense, if you want to keep it really simple, like ABC kind of explanation, isn't that much different from interacting with another human being. You can usually sense when somebody has good intentions or when they don't. So just trust yourself. It's very much about trusting your own discernment. Now, the big difference between interaction with a human being and with an extraterrestrial is that the communication is telepathic. So you don't have to talk and explain stuff. Everything happens in a split second and whatever you think will be there right away. That's very different from our physical slow density manifestation unfolding system that we've got going on here. Or should I say when we're focused in this layer of creation. So that is different. But the bottom line, when people are like, oh, aren't you afraid that this is evil? you know it when it's quote unquote from bad intent you know it you can feel that if you trust yourself you will know that and then you can say no to it you know just like you said earlier if you had an encounter and it wasn't fun and you you're like oh i don't prefer this go away or stop or no you know easy enough and the response will usually be um more effective than with people <laughs> Because people are, you know, clingy and they're like, oh, but maybe like this, <laughs> I can still reach you with my bad vibes. And no, when, when you're up there, when you're focused in the astral and you see something you don't prefer and you're very consciously aware of that, you say no to it and it's gone. Bam, like that. Simple. But, you know, you're also the one who invited it. So it's good to actually realize that existence is a mirror so you perceive elements of yourself they may be highly out of proportion like you would never have recognized yourself in that way in the physical realm mm. but if something like that is what you encounter you needed an emphasized picture of something that was usually suppressed so this is where the quote-unquote negative experiences come from i don't see them as negative in the whole in the, in the bigger picture because hmm. they have to grow just like did your bad first boyfriend or you know your horrible neighbor was always in a mood or, i don't know just just giving earth examples right so whoever i can relate to that in the sense that you know if when i've done ayahuasca there's plant sacred plant medicine there's been times when things have come up through me that were not typically comfortable to look at. I mean, I will say the majority of my journeys have been amazing and fabulous. However, those moments, and they could have been hours because it's timeless, but when that has happened, I've never run, I've never resisted it. It's never been terrible. In fact, it's been enormously cathartic and I've been grateful for the release of that part of the journey too. So looking at it like that, you know, whatever's coming up is going out. And I would imagine it's the same when you're connecting with an extraterrestrial, extra dimensional, 
that it is the same. You know, there is some kind of purpose. And if you can just show up for it and experience it, and then like you're saying, you're in choice. You don't have to endure anything. You can say no. And um, so to have a wide, you know, sort of a widened back perspective about the invitation. I think I got the big line, the big outline, where you didn't resist things that that you encountered during your ayahuasca ceremonies, right? At all. Anything. Right. Yeah. That, yeah, that's the way to go. Because if you bring in resistance, um, yeah, that's where your journey takes a different turn, right? So it's good to go with the flow and just see how things unfold naturally because it's our, this is a really nice thing to know maybe for people out there that are still in fear. You will, the moment you don't engage with negativity, you, you retreat from that. You don't get sucked into the negative storyline or narrative. You will automatically navigate into the light. Mm -hmm. So the moment we stop doing anything at all, this is why meditation is such a powerful tool. When you neutralize yourself in a sense, you start navigating into the direction of your light and your higher knowing. So you don't even have to, you don't have to push that. It's your natural state of being. Your whole system wants to be in the light and the higher knowing. You're, you're made of unconditional love. Mm. So it's actually an upstream journey to have a negative belief to begin with about something. So if we engage in negativity, it's a struggle. And we all know that. <laughs> So don't fight, just, you know, embrace and love, compassion. Obviously use your discernment, say no when you wish to say no. And if something happens that you don't agree with, it, I do think it's important to take action if you can. That's very important in our physical life. But um, if you feel that that's not your actual calling, but you're coming from anxiety more than excitement, then excitement for an alternative solution, then don't go into that direction so it again it all comes down to knowing yourself and seeing if whatever you think calls you is something that really calls you or not oh and that actually brings us back to your original question um can you just ask for a sighting or contact yes you can send out the intent from a good place good energy uh but then let it go mm -hmm. that's my advice drop it actually drop it. So you may want to see a sighting and connect to this wonderful, wonderful CE5 network by Stephen Greer or something to, you know, hook up with other people to, to see UFOs and meditate them into our reality uh, awareness um, or invite them. That's a better way by meditation, better way to put it. Um, but then, you know, or, or do something else, listen to another channeler, but eventually all this information is already inside of you. It's already in you. So as you're setting up that intent, you're actually saying, I want to get to know myself better and in a grander way. And whatever way is relevant for you to get to know yourself by in a grander way will then appear. And it may be that you have a really interesting dream or an out of body experiences, like you said before or that little freeze over sensation. And then that will tell you, oh, wait a minute, I'm in contact with higher dimensional energies. So it may manifest for many people in many different ways. Synchronicity may accelerate. And by that, I mean positive synchronicity, um, double numbers everywhere. I mean, 1111, they, they should start their own movement, so awesome. <laughs> right? Okay. Yes, without a doubt. Uh, for me, triple numbers, that's really it. Three, 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 a lot of that. Uh, I have a lot of sevens in my life as well. Uh, but you know, it's all interesting and custom tailored. So that's why it's so important that we share because the more angles of perception we have, the more complete our grander overall understanding of this type of multidimensional context can become. With that, I would ask for you to let us know what we can do to best prepare and invite Arjun of the Yael to come be with us right now. I am, I am with great anticipation, extremely, extremely excited and, um, and want to make this a beautiful, warm experience.
for yeah. Arjun and for you and for us. Thank you. Mm. Well, I'm just gonna get into the state, <laughs> which is something I do by um, doing a little meditation. And uh, it's a guided meditation. So if anybody wants to follow along, you can. Um, I recommend you get nice and comfortable somewhere, place where you can really relax. Um, take a nice few deep breaths in and out and I'll continue from there. So this is my way of connecting with Arjun. Uh, I started, it's, it's basically, I've got the audio running the way I do this. It's pretty much the same meditation, always in groups and private sessions. Um, the way I've learned to connect with them the most effective. So I started kind of halfway is when his energy comes through. People who join or choose to join with a genuine intent to feel whatever interstellar connections they may have, mm -hmm. maybe shift in their own rooms as well. I'm just saying. I'm not saying that is going to happen, but it might, you know, if it's relevant. So, um, and by the end of the meditation, you will be speaking with Arjun. My voice changed a little, little bit somewhere halfway. Some people hear it. Some people don't really hear it. I have some ticks. I'm just going to warn people because <laughs> sometimes they're like, what's going on with her? Um, there's this sound kind of like my tongue kind of gets stuck to the upper part of my mouth and I have to release it. <laughs> Something that happens uh, involuntarily. Um, and sometimes there's like a little bite. Um, that's part of, you know, what happens in my system while I'm channeling, but so that people don't think something's gone wrong. Just saying. <laughs> okay, so if you want to join, we're going to dive in. You can take a nice few deep breaths if you want. Ah, get nice and comfortable. And with every out breath, release all the tension that might still be in your body or in your mind. Release everything that has anything to do with the day thus far. Reset into a new blank slate, this here and now moment. And then you can bring your awareness to your heart space if you like. And from your heart, imagine a silver line of energy sinking down through your body, down through your belly, down through your legs, all the way down to your feet, through the building and into the ground. And picture it sinking deeper and deeper, moving effortlessly through all the layers of the earth. Until eventually you reach the center of the earth, the heart of the planet. And whatever this looks like to you right now, it is absolutely perfect. And you're being warmly welcomed to make a strong connection to this place using your silver line in whatever way feels natural and logical to you right now. And when you feel that you've made that connection in your very own way, imagine that earth energy then flowing through your silver line, traveling back up through all the layers, again effortlessly, returning to the house and the room that you're in. And then picture that earth energy flowing into your body, starting at your feet, moving up to your knees, along the way, hugging every single cell. And from your knees, moving up to your hips, the same thing happens. Every cell begins to resonate in harmony with that earth energy. From your hips through your belly, your lower back, up along the spine and into your chest. And with the next deep and calm breath in, picture that earth energy flowing into your heart and filling it up completely. And then if you like, picture that same silver line from your heart going on a second journey, this time moving upward from your heart, through your throat, through your head, out through the crown chakra, through the building and into the sky and higher and higher beyond the clouds, beyond the ozone layer and into the universe. Your silver line flies effortlessly again. 
this time amongst the planets and the stars until eventually you reach the central sun of your solar system. And here too, you're being warmly welcomed to make a strong connection to the center point of the sun in whatever way you imagine right now would feel logical and natural for you to do. And when you feel that you have also made that connection in your very own way, imagine that solar energy too then flowing through your silver line, traveling back across the universe, returning to your country, your area, your state, the region, the building, and eventually the room or location outside that you are in. And then imagine that solar energy too, if you like flowing into your body, starting very gently this time at the top of your head, moving through your head, passing your eyes, your nose, your mouth, through your neck, into your chest, between and around the shoulder blades, like a blanket of love wrapping around you. And with the next deep and calm breath in, imagine that solar energy too then flowing into your heart, and merging with the earth frequency that was already present there in a never ending golden spiral. And if you want, you can put one or both of your hands on your heart just for a moment, anchor there, land there, for this is where heaven meets earth within you. It is the door through which we speak, the window through which we see at this moment of your time. For dear friends, we are here and we thank you for the invitation of this co-creation. Now, how can we be of service to you? Thank you and uh, welcome, Yael, uh, our June of Yael to the show. I am, um, yeah, that was just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful meditation. I'm deeply in it. And I'm also here with you. I am so excited to meet you. And before inviting you to the Dare to Dream show and before it started, I actually connected with you energetically. And yes. 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 You were Thank aware? You. Yes, we were. Like the Esasani, the Yayala bringing timeless knowledge from outer space. Arjun, what message can you convey to help us understand how we can fully enjoy our lives? our heart's inner space and our lives' outer space, if you will. Thank you, yes. And we are honored too to be cross-connecting with all of you in this here and now. First of all, let us reflect back to you that way of putting it in your language of information coming from out of space or outer space Really, we would love to remind you, first of all, that that is information coming from inner space, coming from within all of you. Because what we do is reflect back to you that which you have always known, but may have temporarily chosen to forget. Which is what you do when you get excited about being focused in a physical dimension, such as yours, the density, the environment, in order to fully explore and experience that to its ultimate level you could say you choose to forget a part of that which you all already are and in that journey you get to remember to rediscover to reconnect with all of that and that is the homecoming sensation and whenever you feel that typical sensation that you call aha when you have that aha sensation when you hear something that your teachers tell you or that you hear from a friend that feels channeled to you, that piece of information that you know your soul has been aching for, it seems, the aha sensation onto itself reveals to you that you must have previously on some level been aware of the information that is being given to you right now because aha means it clicks in. And if it clicks in, there is a fundament already within you ready to receive it. You recognize it. It isn't so much that you're hearing it for the first time. It is that you're remembering. Mm -hmm. And that is what we want to reflect back to you. First of all, 
and what we are very excited about facilitating for you through the channel before you and with all of you in this beautiful and wonderful co-creation. We love that you are all naturally wired in a sense already perfectly wired to find your path in the physical dimension. You all already know that you all in a sense basically fundamentally crave love, joy, peace, harmony. That's built in. That's not new to you. But to experience higher levels of that consciously in your physical awareness, we have been sharing through a multitude of channelers throughout the years, a formula that has been very beautifully translated, coming down to following your highest excitement to the best of your ability until you can take it no further. So no pushing, no pulling without any insistence as to where it ought to bring you in any given here and now moment by following these steps and maintaining a positive outlook on life. Eventually everything else will fall into place and whatever you encounter can be used on that path of accelerating the expansion of your energy frequency and allowing it to rise higher and higher and higher and gaining grander and grander understanding of all that is and everything that is unfolding within that for yourself as an individual. And as you integrate that in your actions, as you walk the talk, as you would say, others, whoever encounters you along the way, whether it is your intention or not to be of service, will benefit from that because it will be beaming off of you. And that is, in a nutshell, how you can most efficiently live your life if you are craving more reflections of going with the flow, of being at ease, and seeing more of that which, would, of that which it is we know you prefer in life. Does that help you? Yeah. Yes, it does. I, it makes me wonder about manifestation, you know, a big oh. word used here on this planet. <clears throat> because if indeed, Arjun, energy is everything, that means that we are everything. So if we are everything, we are all one, whether this planet, literally Gaia, us as humans, everything in the universe, ad infinitum. So it leads me to be curious, is there really a manifestation process? Is it important to mindfully use things like mantras and Sanskrit and attraction and vision? Is that truly how we manifest or is that actually very arduous? There is a lot of efforting there and instead, if energy is everything, then how could we with a desire, completely allow and receive with ease our heart's greatest wants. Okay, thank you for that. So, within the grander understanding that everything is already here and now, yes? Yes. The expansion, quote unquote, that you experience as you move through life is the understanding of your consciousness gaining more and more perspectives within all that is, within life. Mm -hmm. So everything is already here and now. Everything is in that sense. The structure stands and is. And through that structure, you shed your light, you focus your light in an infinite amount of ways. And you get to explore life or all that is from a multitude of perspectives. And the more aware you become of this perspective and then that one and who this is also a possibility. And that one is a valid one as well. All of them are. And as you integrate all of that within you, you feel expansion. So that's how it grows. That's how it accelerates. Understand? Do you understand what we're saying with this? Yes. Okay. So just to break it down a little bit, mm -hmm. that's 
tournament and that's where the sensation of expansion comes from now expansion occurs whether you're aiming for it or not because even if you're not at all putting in any type of action into the direction of something that you're excited about you may feel an increasing energy frequency of repetition in your life perhaps if you choose to live in a very similar way all the time and do not invite too much change or alterations there if you're really really making it an aim you could say to keep it small if your belief is that that's safer mm. then at some point the natural energy frequency within your being will start to feel bored or anxious mm. angry or frustrated now what these lower energy frequencies are telling you is darling this is not your natural state of being mm. whatever you're choosing to do right now is coming from a motivational mechanism that is not actually in alignment with your higher self because in alignment with your higher self is the wish to explore is your natural curiosity so what we're saying here is that even if you're really 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 passionately attempting to not expand you will still expand and the way that that will be translated to you then will be by these lower energy frequency emotions energy emotion that remind you of the fact that you're creating a discord or a gap between who you believe to be as a persona self and what you actually are as a soul you get this mm -hmm. yes i love Over it you're always expanding. So even if you're resisting the idea of expansion, you are. So the reason that we're throwing this in here is because you are coming up with examples such as the idea of doing mantras and so forth. So what we're reminding you of here is you don't actually need to do anything to expand. Now, obviously, there are more preferred and less preferred ways to have yourself expand because quote unquote expanding into the direction of discovering that you're keeping yourself in a way too small little room isn't that preferred for most people we understand so looking for tools or guidelines to flow the expansion into a preferred direction yes you might choose to use mantras or use crystals or any type of ceremonial effort or plant medicine whatever calls you in mm -hmm. and usually the fact that that resonates with you whatever it is that we have just mentioned or anything outside of that little list will reveal to you if you're excited about it that there is something in there that can allow you to expand in your personal process of getting to know yourself better. In other words, what you're letting yourself know by feeling that excitement about any or all of these tools is this particular tool holds something that will mirror back something to me that I can use in the grander understanding of all that I already am. But they are all just tools and this is why we call them what you might call permission slips permission to allow yourself to be more of your natural self that's what any and all of these are any tool any technique any ritual any teaching that you choose to use to expand your awareness in that sense is a permission slip because it isn't that any or all of these have any type of power over you you see, mm -hmm. everything is fundamentally neutral in your reality. You are the one that subscribes a power or a meaning into it. So if you feel drawn to crystals, then crystals will, in that sense, most likely have an energy exchange with you that benefits you on your journey because you feel that attraction it manifests in your reality as a legit tool but it may not work for somebody else so you will choose your own custom-made path and this is why it is so important to get to know yourself so that you can discern and recognize the difference between 
something that you may just be wanting to be true for you or that you are knowing to be true for you. There's a difference. Do you understand? I do. You okay. have said, Arjun, that vulnerability is our greatest strength. First, can you explain what do you mean by vulnerability? Openness, transparency. Not holding back, not hiding, not suppressing, not acting as if, but being open, direct, and transparent. Mm. That is a strength. Even if, would you call vulnerable when somebody is very sad or feels very challenged by life? It is in fact by being open about these things that you can meet each other much more effortlessly than when you are continuing the mindset of having to keep up a facade or otherwise running the risk of losing face. This is something that keeps your hearts far away from each other whilst we know that all of you are craving nearness mm -hmm. in that sense and this particular day and age very profoundly invites you to remember that amongst many other things powerful so with that in mind vulnerability then i would imagine that if being transparent that means that love would be our greatest ally is that correct yes you could say that the power of creation itself translated in your human language is unconditional love you are literally made of unconditional love as is anything and everything else that you can observe in your reality, no matter how it chooses to represent itself. Understand that unconditional love can carry it all and doesn't judge, hence the unconditional. So what about intimacy and sexuality? I am extremely sensitive and I can see how that creates a lot of desire for me to be intimate and sexual, but they're not mutually exclusive. And ultimately that's what I desire, but I'm not always so sure about aligning with that. And so on behalf of the listeners, I just would like to ask more about what are the possibilities with intimacy, with love, with sexuality, with vulnerability, with allowing all of that to be, become a sort of beautiful soup that we can live in? Well, thank you. The idea is that these are natural aspects of your being for some people, a little bit more to the surface and for others, a little bit more in the background. You have those more passionate types, as you would say, and those that are naturally a little bit more timid, they just have a different way, different spectrum of engaging with the reality as they perceive it from their point of view. But for all of you, these can be very natural aspects within life and amongst yourselves, so to speak, but where you are right now in your co-creation of reality, which is a bundle of overlapping realities as every single one of you individually creates their own version of reality. Within this overlap of realities that you perceive as your shared reality, there is a lot of dogma and a lot of negative belief systems and a lot of insecurity around the topics of intimacy and sexuality at this point. And so there again, it is really important to begin by allowing more transparency, more openness, more sharing around these topics. Mm -hmm. We understand that even when you're just getting to know somebody, even way before you had your first romantic kiss, a ton of thoughts, and pre-assumptions have already already run through both of your minds before that kiss actually happens and sometimes it even happens during the kiss or right after oh we kissed now that means such and such needs to happen or we kissed that means such and such something else isn't gonna happen anymore you see so the important thing is here as you are on your way 
to, in a sense, becoming fully telepathic yourselves at some point in your own evolution of mankind right now to cross the threshold to tip that tipping point that the year of 2020 is very much about you may want to share your thoughts your feelings your emotions with that other person to allow for what you could call a new paradigm relationship to grow where there are no blanks where there are no constantly lingering question marks or assumptions in the background about what a specific action means for either one of you obligations that come in you see things like that make it an open conversation bring it into the light laugh about it this is a very very giggly subject when you begin to speak your truth about all of these things and have compassion understand that a lot of people have hardly got a clue what intimacy could actually be for them because of the way that all of this has been suppressed throughout your society throughout what you understand to be your current history so our invitation would be to open up open up open up the more you open up the more you can allow in the more you will feel that sense of homecoming and the less things will be depending on what they look like on the outside beautiful can you address our june really interesting times right now yes uh, <laughs> on this planet and since you are not living here but observing here and still connected to what's going on. What is it? What do the Yael think? What do you think? What is the perception of what's happening? What is the reason that there is so much unrest and so many people's emotions have been kicked up? I certainly have my own perception about what's going on. And a lot of it is frankly, for me, very good and uh, fascinating, but I would love you to weigh in for people listening. Can you really address at a deep level? What is this all about? Yes, thank you so much. So the reason that we're connecting with you in this way to begin with is because you have invited us in. This is quite important to begin with to answer your question. Mm -hmm. You have invited us from your overall collective energy frequency. Mm -hmm. And those of you that are hearing this now are allowing it in because on some level you asked for it. So this is the case for every single thing that you manifest, co-create on the face of your earth. On some level you asked for it. Now that doesn't mean that you have consciously asked for the suffering of other people. Not at all. It means that on a higher level, when you truly zoom out and you see these circumstances from a higher point of view, you understand the potential that lies within them. So if you would really wish to shake an entire collective of beings awake, what would you do? In a sense, you could say that that is what is going on right now. A lot of people are simultaneously being given the invitation to investigate and research within themselves what their own truths are, how they wish to continue life from here on. You could say that with your quarantine, your lockdown, a lot of people have been given space and time to think, to reflect, to innerly investigate and to remember to maybe first get very much so, more confused, but realize that confusion just allows you to realize that something might have been missing, that you weren't allowing yourself to act upon previously in life so far. So you're giving yourself a reset point to neutralize, to rediscover your center, to discover in many cases how balanced you can actually be in the face of certain circumstances. Also for some people to discover of how much help and assistance they can be for others. Mm. They may have never suspected was within them as a capability. This is a chance for many people to 
realize that they can add to the whole in a proactive manner, creative, loving, caring, compassionate, coming up with new ideas and to practice that wonderful balancing act inwardly in the face of certain circumstances as they're being represented to you or presented to you right now on the face of your earth. Realize also, remember that not everything that you see is a version of reality that you are bound to. Mm -hmm. This is again a really potent time where there is a type of, you could say, literal splitting going on of many versions of earth that will propel into the quote unquote future, as you call it on their own bandwidth, on their own radio wavelength. So some things that you observe right now may not seem to make any sense to you at all. And you may not feel connected to them either, not curious about it, not affected by it. Then we would say, let that be, let that go. Then that is just there for you to realize that you are right now capable of consciously disconnecting from that which is still a gift, which is still a reason why you might manifest even that slightest shimmer of a version of reality that we understand is not actually speaking to you into your reality awareness. But then there are challenges, obviously closer by, that do seem to affect you. And you have collectively called them in, you could say everybody in their own way. You will find that people that you know are challenged by very different things than you might be. Everybody has their own button, buttons that are being pushed right now through uh, these circumstances. And you can all use them in your own individual ways to expand your understanding of yourself, who you are, what you wish to do with life, who you wish to be. And you invite yourself to focus more sharply, like in, 2020 vision, yes, pun intended. Focus more sharply and wow. vision for yourself the type of future mm. that you are craving, that you are convinced also that you know would suit you and many others that you love. You can envision images of future versions of Earth mm. and be grateful for them. Even, do, even though you do not yet see proof of them manifested around you. And by playing around in that way and keeping it light, remember the first step of enlightenment is to lighten up. By keeping it light, you will find that if that becomes your major point of focus, it will become your major point of attraction. Mm -hmm. And you will see more reflections of that type of reality, versions of it, reflected back to you in what you call your outer world. Yeah. Because you're allowing it in through the focus point in your inner set of beliefs, your inwardly chosen point of focus. Collectively, then, are we complete? Have we uh, shaken up and stirred enough? Or is there more? I have heard some people say, that this is not the end. There is more shaking to come, more challenges to come, more breakdowns uh, on their way. Is that so, or is that something we can modulate and change? And how can we show up for all of this? How can we surf, if you will, uh, on the crest of the waves so that this does not bring us into an undertow of fear and anxiety and loss, but instead, all the shaking and what is potentially there to be created from it, which is certainly something I feel and I'm excited about. How can we ride the crest of those waves into something wholly different and uh, a, an all new creation for humanity and for Gaia? Yes, thank you so much. So fundamentally, it may assist you to remember at all times that as the unknown unfolds and becomes apparent to you in your reality, that there is nothing in there that you will not be able to use in one way or another to your benefit. Just knowing that makes it effortless to love the unknown, whatever may come. 
whether more shaking will occur or less shaking will occur, then is no longer a question, is no longer a concern. You understand so far? Yes. Uh -huh. Just know that within that quote unquote unknown, the light of your being, the light of your soul is stretching out and will reflect back to you, bring into materialization as you understand it, bring into your reality perception only more of that which is part of you so nothing to fear there but just remember you will be able to use it you will be able to use it if you choose to use it in a positive way this is in your hands entirely nobody else can force or alter that for you this is for every single one individually the open invitation that your higher self at any given moment sends out to all of you. You decide what you do with the circumstances. The circumstances do not matter. Your state of being is what matters. And by that you could even replace the idea of matter with materializes what matters in your material world or perception of it. Yes? Yes. So as you flow through life with that fundamental understanding, there is a whole lot less to fear, nothing really, nothing to fear really. And as you do that, you said, how can we be present? How can we be a full on part of the game, so to speak, mm -hmm. to be there for others? Yes. That was the question. Yes. And ourselves and the co-creation of what's to come. Yes. Well, again, that just ties back into the formula that we've shared earlier and that has been shared with you many, many years and way before this channel. That is following your highest excitement to the best of your ability in any given moment without pushing or pulling as far as you can take it mm -hmm. with zero assistance as to where the outcome ought to bring you. By other words, trusting your inner guiding compass. Mm -hmm connecting with yourself, getting to know yourself better so that you understand when certain emotions arise, that they are there for a good reason. So when you do get sad, when you do get angry, realize that these emotions initially, most often, are a call to action. There is something that you're observing that you're not preferring in your reality. So what can you do about it? And can you believe something different about it to be true so that it doesn't feel constantly sad or angering to you as you are being confronted with it again and again and again, if it is something that reoccurs in your reality more frequently. So the first 15, around in about seconds of feeling anger, of feeling despair, or feeling any low energy frequency, emotion usually is a type of wake-up call just there to help you remember that whatever you're observing right now in your reality is not preferred now then it becomes important and this is where it comes in you need to get to know yourself then it becomes important to ask yourself why am i feeling this way in the observation of this particular circumstances why am I feeling this way? If the feeling doesn't subside after realizing that you're giving yourself a wake up call, oh, this is not preferred, and it lingers around and it keeps dragging you down deeper and deeper and deeper, then obviously you are dealing with a belief system that is not in alignment with your higher knowing, with your higher self, with your true natural beingness. So figure out what that belief is and transform it. So maybe you observe people in a far away country going through something very challenging and it makes you sad and you realize this is not preferred in my version of reality and then it makes you more sad and you realize something there must be a belief system in the background right now because i wouldn't continue to feel this sad if there wasn't a negative belief about what i'm observing to be true and then you can figure that out by asking yourself why am i choosing very important part of this statement because you, it is a choice, you always have a choice. Why am I choosing to feel sad in the observation of these circumstances? And then allow the ego, love your ego, it's your friend, it's your buddy, it's your sidekick. 
allow that beautiful darling ego that makes it possible for you to be focused in a physical reality to begin with. Allow that ego to come up with the first thing that is on its little mind. And if it says, those people in that faraway country are suffering and you cannot do anything about it. And then you realize that that's what's making you more and more and more sad. Then realize that you can do something. There is always something that you can do when you observe suffering like that. Mm -hmm. Even if it doesn't seem if it is a direct route to one of these individuals, you can directly from your heart send them love. Mm -hmm. But the fundamental idea of your observation is that you do not wish to see anybody sad. Mm -hmm. So if it is your passion to bring joy to anyone sad, we already know there are plenty of people around you in a closer proximity to you that would love to be cheered up by you. Mm. That's so you can, you can do something. You can always do something that is within your possible range of action in that sense. And don't force yourself to have it to look a certain way. Again, do not insist on the outcome. Mm. And read the energy frequency. Is somebody even really desiring your assistance or aren't they that much? It's also really important right now or very helpful for a lot of people to realize that some people just aren't ready to hear some good advice, so to speak, that they're going through a process mm. where they need to be left alone with whatever they're believing to be true for now. Mm. And you can let them know, I'm there for you when you're ready to share again, maybe at some point, I'm just here I don't need anything from you, but I'm here. You can hold space in that sense. That's a very beautiful gift for a lot of people right now. And it's also okay to feel sad and to allow some things to come up from perhaps the past. Perhaps you see things happening around you right now that trigger childhood memories that still wish to be seen. And it might be important for you to take a little look at them and see what it is that you believe to be true from your here and now point of view as an adult what you believe to be true about these childhood memories that you're choosing to recreate in your here and now moment, you see, because the past is a storyline that you create from the now. So maybe that's something that wishes to be looked at again as well. And that can help you feel more self-empowered when you change the beliefs, the definitions that you put around these seeming circumstances. Does that assist you? Very much, very much. I intimately understand a lot of what you're talking about. And I was reflecting on the one piece about the sending love that you can from afar send kindness energetically. When I am driving in Los Angeles, uh, the times when I've seen that there's an accident, a traffic accident, and possibly somebody's injured, there's maybe a fire truck or the emergency technicians there, I always, always send them prayers and love and ease and angels um, rather than be a looky-loo or you know, off in some fantasy about what's going on, I immediately send them a lot of love and kindness. So from that perspective, I understand on a grander scale what you're talking about and what's possible. Thank you. We've spoken to a person a while back and she explains to us that she felt challenged every single time she heard an ambulance mm. touring through the neighborhood with the sirens going off. And she said, while your COVID-19 started spreading, Every time she heard an ambulance, she felt so sad and desperate. Mm. And she thought now there were ambulances before, but now she felt that all of them had to do with the COVID-19, right? So we said to her, why not every single time you hear an ambulance, smile and love the fact that help is on its way. Whatever is going on, whoever made the phone call or whatever it was for, help is on the way. 
assistance is present and you too are being guided. Maybe all of these ambulances stand out to you so much because you've been doubting whether help is present for you in your life. And when you begin to relax into the idea that your higher self is 24 seven communicating with you, that nothing happens without reason, that you've got your back basically, the grander you of the universe has got your back and you're always in place and you can't be off track. And when you hear an ambulance that just reminds you, if you like, if you choose to look at it that way, that there is assistance, that you're being carried, you can look at it that way if you like. And so she smiled It made her laugh really with release and relief. And she said, I would love to look at it that way from now on. So she did. Mm. Now she doesn't notice nearly as many ambulances anymore. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That is funny. What, when will open contact happen? How will open contact occur? Well, the when is spread over a myriad amount of possible future timelines. And since right now you are in such a wildly creative overlap of various versions of Earth, there are versions that you can observe right now in your reality where you meet people who won't see it, who simply won't see it. They won't have this idea of a future earth with open contact. And then there are those that will be an active part within it. But all of these are coexisting right now. And you're all being invited to choose the direction that you wish to take mm. for yourself. And for some people, this may sound very paradoxically, but they want open contact so badly that they actually invite resistance regarding the idea to begin with. Mm -hmm. So allow it to flow without pushing or pulling into manifestation if relevant for you. So just know, as with anything else in your life, if you want to, open invitation as always. We're not telling you what to do. But allow yourself to remember that if it is relevant for your path of exploration, then that might be a segment of what you understand to be your version of reality. And you will allow it in. Mm -hmm. You can play with it if you like and fantasize how that might look like and this is how we get to the how now we've been connecting with you a long long time in many many different ways and what you're observing right now before you the co-creation with the channel before you is one of the ways wherein we are already connecting mm. but a more direct and faster way even is in your dreams in your meditations, in your meditative states, that doesn't necessarily mean sitting still and being quiet. Meditative states or the gamma frequency in your brain waves occurs whenever you are, you guessed it, following your highest excitement to the best of your ability in any given moment until you can take it no further with zero insistence as to where it ought to lead. So when you're allowing yourself to raise your energy frequency to these levels, you automatically end up in a channeling state or meditative state where life just flows through you. Whatever is relevant for you will then become apparent to you in a very effortless manner. Now, there is a little joke that we are playing out with many of you that we know are interested in more contact Look at even puns, jokes, little segments in your news, graffiti of ET heads. We've seen people running into these things seemingly at random, but mm -hmm. a lot, very often. And these are little winks from the universe, from the greater you mm -hmm. that are present in one way or another might be a part of the play on your stage mm -hmm. now if that excites you you can quote unquote accelerate that by allowing yourself to follow your curiosity follow your passion mm -hmm. investigate further see how it is that you would like to ground that idea of open contact in your reality because if in your version of future earth we are an open subject in conversations 
maybe you would like to start laying out the fundament of that version of earth for yourself today or tomorrow with some people that you feel that you can trust and speak openly about these things with and then maybe when you feel more confident about the topic you may start to ask some other people that you never expected would even ever go there with their minds what are your ideas about ufos and ets and just explore together get to know each other and allow the fears and the resistances around this subject of our presence in your lives allow them to service and shed a light on them with those that are open to allow that to occur and that way you can help ground it and build a platform a fundament for us to land on literally and figuratively in a sense and get closer to you but the reason that we are speaking through a person of your own species in this co-creation right now is because we are in no way shape or form intending to invade your society or push ourselves on to you none of that so you can rest assured that we have started open contact with other worlds before in what we understand to be our past and explorations throughout the cosmos and we have a plan a guideline a loose plan you could say in co-creation with your own human over soul and only with permission from that layer with your full and open heartfelt invitation of a certain segment of the population on your planet and only then we will take the next step and the next step and the next step but depending on where everybody individually is right now in their personal process, it may look differently. It may look differently. There are people that will manifest a version of Earth where quite a bit of back and forth, you could say, in dialogue with government and military will, quote unquote, have to take place before they can embrace and accept that there is, quote unquote, more. There are versions of Earth where it will come so much more through the people where the people we love this version as an example we inspire you to be those people if you like if you're excited to be those people where the people grounded through their own innate knowingness that there is more that you are not alone in the cosmos where you yourselves as the people invite us for more open tangible, visible communication. And we may respond here and there for those for whom it is relevant by showing our ships or appearing in your dreams more tangibly. And you will know the difference between what you understand to be a quote unquote regular dream, more so a dream that you use to process your everyday life in, and the dreams wherein we come and peek around the corner to say hello, and you will feel the recognition and that will be a sensation that no reasoning from no pyramid system from no top organization with money or status can even begin to challenge because you will know it with the capital k within your being you will remember and recognize it as part of you and that is where we begin that's where the seeds are being planted and this is why the word star seed we feel is quite appropriate for those who wish to be part of that planting mm -hmm. of a new paradigm on your earth arjun may i ask you one last question yes of course i so appreciate what you just shared and um i'm going to preface this question with a little bit of information with the hope that the, the listeners and the watchers will re be resonating with this. I had a bit of what you're talking about, which is uh, when I was a young kid, I remember turning on the TV and there was a movie on, Unexpected. It was called The UFO Incident. 
And it was a uh, American biographical film. It was starring James Earl Jones and Estelle Parsons. And it was based on a 1961 alien abduction of real people, Barney and Betty Hill. Yes. And I, I could not turn the television off. I was riveted. It was a brilliant movie. And I watched the entire thing. And I remember, I mean, it had a huge impact on me. Years later, I read all of Whitley Strieber's books. Huge impact, but scared the crap out of me. Oh, how <laughs> <And> exciting. Years, <laughs> many years later, I had the great honor of having Whitley Strieber on this show. Still one of the best interviews I feel I've done. Um, he's an amazing, amazing person and a great storyteller, very compelling. And I believed him. But, but the point about what I'm saying with all these stories is there. So, so I'm, for the first time in my life, I'm looking back on all of these markers and saying, huh, maybe there was a fascination there, but I was quite closed down, quite skeptical. And then Robert Perala comes on the show. And then Bashar Daralanka comes on the show. And so I'm still playing in this energy, but still pretty shut down to it. But now I feel something really different. You are here with me because I feel awakened, if you will. I feel compelled and curious and hungry. And this for me is the conversation. I can't imagine honestly, anything else. And I feel driven for more, hungry for even more. So what is that about that? Clearly something in me has changed, <laughs> but, I, but I mean, on a lot of levels, I feel like something else. And I, I'm just curious about that for me and, and also what it might mean for other people. Well, thank you. Well, it sounds like you've let go of a fear-based belief that was active within you previously in that version of the past as you just laid it out for us as an example, where you were still, well, pushing in the gas, but also the brakes simultaneously. You understand? Yes. Causing this type of inner friction of really, really wanting to know what you described about not being or seeming because you were, but you didn't seem able to turn off the television during that program. And still you didn't fully take it to the next level either. And now you feel you're taking it to the next level, correct? You're right. allowing it in deeper. So there's been a shift in you and that's what we could ask you in return. What is the difference between that past version of you, as you and the version that you were, quote unquote, choosing to be before? Mm. What was she believing about these things to be true? Oh, my goodness. That anything that had to do with, air quotes, aliens was terrifying. That something would happen against your will, that you would be probed, that you would be hurt, that you would be taken against your will, that nothing you did could stop them. They could come through walls and ceilings and, and it could happen over and over and over again. You could be traumatized and repressed. That, that was my vision. And here I am hanging out with you. <laughs> and it's so not that vision. It's actually delicious. It's wonderful and it's exciting and it's progressive and mind opening and all of that. Well, thank you. So you've shifted yourself to a version of you that allows herself to look beyond that surface level wherein for some people, the experiences may have seemed to be limited to us coming through the walls, through the ceilings, every type of interaction that might seem less preferred, medical researches, stuff like that. We're not saying these things didn't happen. Mm -hmm. What we're saying is that when you allow yourself to look beyond that, that is where you find the grander perspective. And that's what you've allowed yourself to do. For those of us who are now living in the grander perspective, uh, I, I guess you've really answered this, but I, I just, I feel like circling back to this right at the end, just about the invitation, the invitation to keep connecting. 
the invitation to visit, the invitation to engage. I, I am saying right now, I'm very open to it. We hear you. And we invite anybody else who is curious in that sense to explore their own grander beingness if they feel at all excited to explore it through this particular route of exploration to set out that same intention and if relevant you will see an acceleration of synchronicities in your reality that will be very fun to follow along like a breadcrumb trail leading eventually back to you, which is, of course, the origin of it all eventually. Because we dream you up, you dream us up, mm. and in our shared mutual dream, we both get to grow and expand in a bigger understanding of whom and what we all already are. And for that, in any given of these type of communications, co-creations, for that we thank you, because you complete us. Mm. Thank you, and we wish you a blissful, playful, creative, and exciting rest of your day. Thank you, Arjun. <sighs> <clears throat> So I will just bridge a little bit while Vitika comes back because that's got to be a little bit jarring to have been gone for a period of time and just say that uh, was so profound for me to hear Arjun of all the words, by the way, to use dream when this is the dare to dream show, but to conclude with us dreaming each other. Because if we are metaphysicians, that of course is correct right? If everything is basically an illusion that we create into being, into matter, and that's what matters, then certainly that is true. It is all a grand play, as Shakespeare once said, and all the players, here we are, the merely players. So uh, that, was, that was really beautiful experience. And thank you so much, Vitika, for being the conduit to allow that level of connection to come through. I'm really moved. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> My pleasure. I would like to bring this back to you. I follow you on Facebook now, now that we're connected. And you <laughs> posted a meme on your Facebook page. And just so people know, her Facebook page is designed for awareness, like her website is designed, letter four, awareness.com. The Facebook page is designed for awareness. And I mm -hmm. rather like it. And this meme reads this, be a mess. It's fine. The universe is a mess. Galaxies are drifting all over the place. To be tidy is to be out of time with the cosmos. Can you say a little bit about what that means to you, that the universe is a mess and that being tidy is actually being out of tune with the cosmos? Okay, so <laughs> I love that you picked this one. <laughs> um, <clears throat> for me, I, I shared this meme because um, to me it stands for all those little unexpected moments that we have with ourselves, right? You know, on our journeys where we surprise ourselves in our own responses to things in life. Like you're surprisingly upset or surprisingly <laughs> happy. I mean, but it's never something that you could have come up with before or, or previous to the actual event, uh, whatever that might have been. Um, and so it looks messy nature looks messy i mean trees just throw their leaves all over the ground in autumn you know it's like not nice little tiny rows of leaves and uh, our cells in our bodies it, it, it appears like like it's it's a mess if you just look at it from from one layer and on, on another higher point of view it's perfectly organized and i think that meme to me means we don't have to push it to find order in ourselves. If we love 
the seeming messy top surface layer and we embrace it all and we just integrate it and we don't judge it negatively then the built-in order of all that is of nature will reveal itself to us so you don't actually have to be tidy but i do believe though paradoxically that if if you're so okay you know with how things just are that maybe naturally you will become more organized also in your house and in your life but <laughs> i'm not sure if that's a fact but this is something i'm suspecting to be true that you know less things will take you off guard and um it's all the power of paradox right i mean when you try to prepare yourself for something by um getting ready for the worst you know in a sense which is what we are so trained to believe we should do then we only allow in more resistance because we are ready for resistance in a sense so we already send out that energy frequency but if we just allow you know and before whatever happens we're like okay well worst case scenario it all falls to pieces and if we can make peace with that then that's very unlikely to happen and probably you know the worst case scenario won't have a relevance for us anymore because we already made peace with it there's no resistance mm -hmm. there and resistance is attraction you know what is this sentence again uh what you resist persists mm -hmm. so yeah <laughs> that's that's why i posted that meme maybe it's like a way more extensive explanation than you would expect from why somebody posts a meme but that's what i thought of yeah it felt cool and profound that's why i want to ask you i liked it a lot i like i like the idea like order from chaos you know something yes, born exactly. out of rubble that's, that's right. pretty beautiful it feels very artistic too so i, I just want to ask because you know people may be curious you as an artist what is it you do i know you originally said um, part of your catharsis growing up was to draw and some mm -hmm. of some of your experiences do you do graphic designs is it et drawings how does your art manifest through you i love to paint uh but recently i started to well i was an illustrator for a while i worked for newspapers i did some children's books mm. uh book illustrations um so funny i kept attracting assignments into my reality that all had to do with the cosmos or overcoming fears <laughs> amazing um the last children's book i illustrated is a dutch one about a little boy um, who builds his own rocket and wants to to take off into the cosmos it's, it's really funny um and that's when that's exactly the tipping point where I started to do life coaching and eventually the, uh, the ET team uh, hooked up with me and we started creating this path together. Um, but yeah, uh, I recently started drawing again, doodling again in an illustrative manner, um, mm -hmm. making little uh, ET uh, cartoons about some things that have been going on in the world. I don't know if you have time to edit anything in later, maybe? I could send you some images and maybe you can show some pictures of paintings I made at the end. Oh, of please. The, yeah. Absolutely. That would be yeah. so fun. Yes. Okay, then I'll, I'll send you some of the paintings and a little cartoon that I made. And then now uh, people can, you know, look for themselves. For me, it's just a passion. Mm. It's just I do for joy. And um, yeah, it brings me in a, into a very meditative state as well. Gorgeous. Well, this is Dare to Dream. So I will end with this question. What do you next dare to dream? What are your future desires, goals, dreams? What does that look like or feel like? Oh, wow. I love that question. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, I'm not sure. I haven't never been sure since I was a teenager whether I'm going to stay in the Netherlands. I traveled a lot out of my passion. Um, I'm curious to see unfold if in the coming years um, I will discover what country it is that fully calls me to maybe partially also be located there next to the Netherlands, like go up and down a little bit or actually immigrate and move out of this country. I don't know, but it's something that I've been dreaming of. I'm dreaming of writing a book. I'm dreaming of <laughs> making more of those silly cartoons. <laughs> um, 
I'm dreaming of working more with groups, um, with the group channeling um, setup that I share segments of on my YouTube channel mostly. Yeah, there's a lot of, I see a lot of stuff that really excites me. Um, and I love that more and more people are meeting each other. Like, I'm, this is probably maybe even, even the things that I'm so most joyful about. As a result of starseedhub.com, people are now sending me letters, you know, from places like, I don't know, like Iceland and, you know, like places that seem really remote. And they're like, oh, we found other star seats and we're going to hang together and we're going to build a community. And we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And I'm so happy for them. So I dream of a world where this becomes an open topic mm. uh, on all levels. Um, dare I say, even politically. <laughs> but I, I really, really set out the intention for that conversation to be um, peaceful. I'm curious to see how this will unfold. I invite people to stay in their hearts, to stick with what they know is true and not get distracted by storylines that are manipulative. Mm. That's something I would like to say, yeah, at the end of this. And well, it's my dream, you know, that we all eventually meet. Um, whether that will be, you know, like physically um, in my life, whether I will see that for myself or not, I don't know. All I can do is just, you know, follow my heart and uh, surrender to the fact that if it is relevant for me, then it will. And yeah, it would be awesome to see a lot of you people, whoever is listening and tuning in right now, <laughs> on that same version of future Earth. Spaceship Earth, here we go. <laughs> Ditto, I'm with you. Yes, I would love to meet you in person as well. So uh, I, I will hold that in my heart. And Vitika, how can people connect with you? You mentioned starseedhub.com. What are the other ways that they can connect with you? Oh, the Starseed Hub is not really a way to connect with me, but more with whoever is local and in your area that you would, you know, want to expand your own process with, which I highly recommend because that's where it starts, right? And life contact, I really do believe, is a huge addition to our personal journeys. So reach out to each other. Um, if people want to reach out to me, they can do that to, through my uh, website, which you already said is Design for Awareness. Dot com the four is the number four um, and they can check out if they want to see more videos uh, with segments of our June channeling um, through me <laughs> they can go to my YouTube channel uh, which is my own name at the moment uh, Vitika Kohlhoff you would say Kohlhoff <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny because cool, I mean, it sounds really cool in your language. <laughs> that really means cabbage in my language. <laughs> it's so, close. And half is garden, so it's cabbage garden. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's like, it's such a letdown, right? But your name, is, your name is cabbage garden. Yeah, but it sounds cool in English, so cool. <laughs> And it's K-O-O-L-H-O-F for folks who are wondering. Uh, that is just priceless. I love that we end on such a whimsical note. Thank you, Vitika, for being such just a wonderful guest. Uh, thank you for really, really bringing it today. And thank you, I feel compelled to say, for what is for us in the future, what we may co-create and collaborate on, I just know I'm extremely open to this conversation and it feels the most relevant thing I could be doing in this moment, in this day. So I'm deeply grateful that you joined me and all the Dare to Dream listeners and watchers. Ah, Debbie, darling, thank you so much for following your heart and for building this wonderful platform for such, well, really progressive conversations to take place on. Uh, I, I feel honored to have been a part of this as well. Keep, uh, keep shining your radiant light. I know you catch many. Mm -hmm. Blessings, everybody. And remember, don't just dare to dream. Remember to create all your dreams into your reality. The Dare to Dream podcast has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. 
Dare to Dream is ranked in the top 100 best podcasts in USA in self-improvement on Apple Podcasts and ranks in the top 50 podcasts globally. Debbie Dashinger is a certified coach whose expertise is visibility in media. She coaches people to write a page-turner book, takes their book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and Debbie pulls back the curtain so her clients have the system to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. Connect with Debbie Dashinger at debbiedashinger.com. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com. The Dare to Dream podcast is sponsored by Dr. Dane Here and Access Consciousness.